Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. Today we're going to finish this backgaming board. Want to see how I finish this up? Stay tuned. So I started out with sycamore. I planed it down to a half inch. So I got a quarter inch dado stack uh, set up in the table saw and I want no more than a quarter inch um, cut on this. So I got my digital uh, depth finder so I can uh, swing this over to a quarter and get it as close as I can. And it's pretty important for me to have a quarter inch because that's the way I designed the overlap of my backgammon board. So the very top of it is 249. So I got my quarter inch data blade in the, in the fence. I got the fence set uh, eighth inch away from the uh, right side of the blade. So I'm gonna make a quarter inch dado at a quarter inch depth, one eighth inch away from the edge. I'm gonna do it on both sides of this uh, piece of sycamore. This is going to be the frame of the board. Okay, I feel like I have to explain why I chose the joint I picked for this box. The original joint that I was going to do was to have a, I'm not real sure what it's called, uh, a lock groove joint, I believe. And that particular joint, this board here, would have this cut out right here. And then this board here would have the opposite cut out coming down like this. After I did that joint, uh, I didn't like how the ends was gonna look because of the groove for the board itself. So I cut away this part of that joint and now I have a flat joint or a rabbit here so now I have a joint that comes out like that and now I need a butt joint here to come into that rabbit after I got the joint situated I uh, put glue on the joints and put them in clamps and let that set overnight this is a little different than what I normally do I've seen this technique on David Picciuto's channel, I believe. Uh, cut uh, all the way through on the long sides and then just barely cut through on the short sides. After I get that cut, I can hand cut the rest of the box away. This way the blade don't pinch that box or that box don't close up on the blade. It actually made it a lot safer and a lot easier. A little bit of hand work with the hand saw separated the box nicely. And now I'm mortising out for the hinges. And this is about where the camera died. So you didn't see the process. So basically I marked out where the hinges went. I took out as much as I could with a little router and then cleaned it all up with the chisel. The self-centering drill bit actually does a really good job on the hinges and then I uh, put four screws in for now just to get everything situated I'll come back and put that middle screw in later once I confirmed everything closed up good took it all apart and started the finishing process now this little jig is to inset my 5 16 inch magnets that I have. Can't find a 5 16 inch uh, Forstner bit so I made this little jig to uh, stop my regular drill bit from going too deep. This actually worked out real good. This was just a uh, steel collet that uh, fit the drill bit in and I put a stop collar in and I epoxied the magnets in place. Now the finish I'm using I'm spraying on uh, 
one and a half pound cut of shellac and I put uh, ended up putting five coats of shellac on the board and let that dry for a couple days. Once that was dry for a couple days, I put a two coats of general finish semi-gloss and then I, after that dried, I finished it all up with paste wax. We'll put all the screws in with the hand screwdriver instead of the drill this time. That way I don't uh, crack the board at this point. Come too far now to uh, ruin the piece. So the backgammon board is finally done. I can't be more happy with this the way it turned out. Um, Five coats of shellac was put on and two coats of general finish top coat semi-gloss finish uh, to uh, close it all up and finish it out. I also have a coat of wax, uh, paste wax on this as well. It turned out very good. It's very smooth and uh, I just can't be more happy with this the way it turned out. It closes up. It has a couple magnetic... Uh, catches to uh, keep it closed and uh, those work out pretty good simple hinges uh, mortised in and then um, I got the bag of chips and dice now the chips I ordered for some reason they didn't send me enough chips to actually play the game I'm supposed to get 15 chips for each collar if I'm not mistaken and I only got 12 of each collar so I either need to order another bag or send these back and get another set. I did make a chip holder um, and it turned out okay. I wasn't real pleased with it. Um, it can fit inside. My original thought was to put a couple magnets here and a couple magnets on here and just do that. Put the chips in, close it up, and then uh, just store it all like that. And then when I want to play the game, just pull the chip tray out and then uh, play the game. Uh, one problem, well, two problems with this chip tray that I built. The dice center is just a little bit too small. And because I only got 12 chips of each collar, I only made the tray big enough for 12 chips. So I'm going to have to remake this and uh, make it a little bit bigger for the dice and all 15 of each collar chips. So all 30 chips. Um, but for now, I can actually store the chips in this little bag that they came in, cinch it up, and just store it inside like that. And that works just as well. But I'm very pleased with the way this turned out. I'll get you some close-ups of the board. Pay close attention to the uh, points of the triangles and um, see how crisp those came out because I was really focusing on that uh, when I was building this. And again, thanks to uh, Dave Gatton. He cut out the uh, aluminum triangles templates so I could actually cut these out with the X-Acto knife. And it made pretty quick work of it and uh, pretty accurate work of it. And of course, Guy Dunlap, he gave me some uh, walnut veneer and he also gave me some pointers on how to do veneer work as well. So thank you guys. I couldn't have done this without you. Uh, that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you next time.